Christine. Hello, Minnie. Hello. So lovely to be with um, you. It's so lovely to be with you. And I very much want, I mean, I actually don't need to know because I know from having watched the show why you chose to revisit the role of Diane Lockhart. Mm. But why did you want to do it? There are many reasons I wanted to do the role of Diane Lockhart or continue. First of all, the writing. It, um, it was always lauded as a beautifully written, intelligently written show. Are they the husband and wife? Yes, they are. Robert and Michelle King the, are show creators. Yeah. You have this beautiful character of Diane Lockhart. You've done seven years on The Good Wife. What was the point? What was the phone call when they went, we've got it? we've got the idea of the through line for this next show and this is, what was that? Well, this is interesting because there was no phone call with an idea. I actually um, decided to do it, to do the spin-off when they finally said, yes, we, we, we want to continue this. I'd gotten another offer to do another network show and on a certain weekend in last spring, I had to, you know, make a decision wow. and I said, Guys, you have to, you know, tell me if if is if if the spin-off is a reality. Is it a possible reality? Because I have a very real offer uh, that I have to decide on this weekend. And they said, no, we want to do this. And uh, yes, it's we we have this idea. And I and I listened to their idea. I said, okay, that sounds promising, but there was no script, and I was really flying blind. I just said, you know what? Instead of 22 episodes on a network show, I think I want to do this streaming series with 10 episodes. That will be a wonderful change in my life. I wanted to do it because I wanted to remain with these writers and with possibly as many crew members and yeah. people involved with The Good Wife because it had been such a happy show, such a beautifully written show. The character herself had such intelligence and integrity. I said, Mm, I'm going to stick around longer with this. I think I'm on terra firma, and I think there's much more to be explored in terms of this wonderful female character. And so that was, that was it. And they didn't give me a script until a few weeks before we started shooting in October, and I made the decision in the spring. You want to have an honest conversation here? Then let's have it. I came to you last week and asked for my money back so that I could buy my dream house. And what did you say? We didn't. No, I want to hear you say it. What did you say? This wasn't us. You said, keep it in your account and borrow on it. I could have had my money back. I... I think it's a good idea that you go. So, but don't you find actors have to very often just go on faith you, in the you, director or the writer? You go on faith, and in television, really, you go on faith based on the writer. And I know when, when I met Scott Silveri, you, you, either, you either get it, you either connect and know that they are your partner in crime for what you hope is going to be a very long time, but you better love them. And had you known Scott, this is for Speechless, when you decided to do Speechless, did yeah. you know him before? No, I didn't. I knew his work. I knew that he'd been a huge part of Friends and had created Joey. And, but he is, he is such an intelligent, great, kind, smart, funny, man and that is all presented without any bombast that that's the kind of person you if you're going to go to work for the hours that we work and um as intensely as that relationship turns out to be that you know you know when it's right and that, i think maybe that's why you could trust in michelle and John robert and robert, robert king. and michelle king yeah well i know that they would come up with something that was brilliant and apropos of the work you've done before but leading into a whole new arena. And, Minnie, did you go into a room with Scott and did he pitch you the idea for this wonderful character that you play so brilliantly on the show? I mean, so, really, it's, it's well, so, beautiful. You know how things come to you in very different ways. Mm -hmm. I've never just sat there and fielded offers. I've often had to go and fight for things and work my way in or develop ideas from a nascent point to a place where it's been interesting. And this was, I think a lot of people had had, a lot of actresses had had a very difficult time metabolizing how to play this part because she's not, she's not immensely um, likable, you know, unless I'm playing her. <laughs> no, I'm joking. She's difficult. She's, she's, she's a hurricane. 
of a person. She's the, and you know, she's the mother. She's, yeah, she the is a mother. mother. She's mm -hmm. a lioness, and yeah. she's fierce. And um, I think she was written as you know that she's from the East Coast. It was written very American, which is why I think it hadn't come my way. And then when I started talking about it, I was like, well, could she be English, and would that make her even more alien and interesting? And then when I met with Scott and with um, with Christine, who is our incredible executive producer and director has directed tons of our episodes, Christine Gurn, and I, I got it. I got, I got how it could be. I got that there's, there's comedy in what's difficult and there's great heart in what's difficult and that messy, harsh characters are funny and heartwarming. Absolutely, and you can reveal so much more humanity, I think, via comedy than you can often in, in, in drama. I, I just see so much humanity in your character. I think it's harder in drama because mm. there's, a, there's a weight that walks in the room before an hour drama. You know, I sat gearing up to, to watch the show knowing I was going to be entering into this world that was powerful and was going to have a lot of emotion. But you... you you have more space maybe in a comedy. It's, it's a tighter ship, a drama. I mean, it's gripping the good fight. I said, I said to you before, I meant to watch one episode and I watched five. <laughs> We've and been watching I, each other for I days. I can't, <laughs> yeah. But I couldn't stop watching. I'm obsessed with, what is the actress name who plays Luca? I am obsessed with her and I can't. Kush Jumbo, oh, isn't she wonderful? God. Yes. But everybody, you know, every, it Dara is a Lindo, wonderful, everybody yeah. on the show. Yep. Um, so I don't know, I think, I think you're coming at humanity from a very different angle. You know? And you have to be more subtle in drama. It was yeah. something I had to learn, because uh, I had done mostly comedy. My, uh, most of my career was comedic roles, and that's how I came to television doing you know, a sitcom and, uh, in the 90s, a sitcom, a sitcom called Sybil. So I felt that I had to learn to just tone it back. There was, you know, the camera can do so much for you as a dramatic actor, it can, you know, camera can watch you think. I can, know, you sort of say sayonara to that in a comedy. I know, but, but you're so wonderfully audacious in your performance, and it never strikes me as being too big. Well, I'm very grateful, because that's my big, that's what I yell at them after. Like, was that not just far too enormous? <laughs> like, like, you know, Goliathan. And they're like, no, carry on, but it's as the, you were. But surely they took your strengths as a comedian and your personality I and tailored mean. the role, right? I think that's what brilliant writers do, right? They, they, they have this idea or they have their outline for what a season will look like and kinds of storylines. And then as they watch that maybe you are adept at physical comedy or that you know how to turn a very particular kind of strange joke or they'll start writing to your strengths and to the, to the, sometimes the ambiguity of, particularly an English actor with, a, with a, a cast of Americans, it's a very particular voice. And they've, they've captured it on Speechless, I think, because it, it's odd. It is the episode where you're drinking tea with your son. That's and the, right. It's so beautiful when, when, when he says, Mum, would you like tea? And you can see how you, you just melt into your Englishness. Like, oh, I'm so appreciative that, <laughs> that I, actually this is how it's done. And he puts the hat. It's, there are moments that are so, so touching in your work. And, and yet it's, it's a broad performance. You know, it's a broad comedy. It is broad. Comedy. Yeah. And, but I mean it in, not in a bad way. I mean, it, it's audacious, and I love that. That's sort of where I come from, That's is doing so work nice. like That's that. That's so nice to hear. Do you find that it's hard, that it was hard to calibrate in comedy, that it's very difficult to, 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 to calibrate your performance when you're having, particularly if you're having a good time with an actor in a scene, to, I feel like in a drama, it, you, you, can, you can sort of stay more centered in a way and, and really trust that you go through a scene and you can feel it much more easily. I find comedy much harder. It, it is harder. It do you is, think that? Yes, I do. I mean, I don't mean that what you're doing is, um, is easy because N it no, isn't. No, but I, don't you think also, many in a television comedy, you know your job is to be funny. Yeah. And sometimes I think 
you feel that pressure of making a joke work. Hmm. You know, you know, okay, it's, it's just meant to get a laugh. And so there's this thing in your head where you go, well, okay, if I don't make it work, they might rewrite it. I know because I do uh, oh, guest so work true. on um, the Big Bang Theory, so I true. often shuttle back and forth. And I, I love doing it because I love to keep my comedic chops in shape. Uh, but you know when you go there, uh, it, it is a, it's a very strict form, television comedy. It, it is, and it is, it, is a, it is completely and utterly different to anything else I have ever done. it's not like stage comedy. No. It's, a, it's a very particular discipline, and I've had to learn it on the fly, really. JJ is so excited. He's never had an aide speak for him before. Just mum. I suppose he is 16 now. It's time his voice changed. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, no, that means he's uh, laughing. How did it feel for you <clears throat> to be number one on the call sheet now that you are the lead in this marvelous comedy? Uh, what is your actual life like? What is your day like? When do you get up? Well, on a Monday, I'm usually up at about 4.45. To Me too, yes. Be, uh, to Mondays be, are brutal. Mondays are brutal. To be at work... You know, sometimes I can make it to Fox from my house in 20 minutes, but I will literally get up at 4.45 and be at work at 5.30. And you're in the makeup chair at? In the makeup chair at, at 5.30, ready to, if crew call is 6.30, to then go and rehearse and light and then finish up hair and makeup while they're lighting. And then, you know, I'll leave at 7 or 8. I mean, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you because, because I, as you said before, I think maybe only another actress could, could understand. If you have a child, if you have a husband or a lover or a boyfriend or a significant other, um, there is such a huge tension between doing your work and doing it well and remaining a consistent part of your child's life and of your partner's life. Hello. And I've, I've never done this kind of juggling before. Um, I've never stood like um, a child at the end of the day, actually not knowing how I'm gonna how I'm gonna go home and do dinner and bedtime and be smiley and happy and energized as I want to be. Um, I'm figuring it out, but that's why I was asking you questions. I kept looking over my shoulder the first when everyone kept asking me. I was like, why are they asking me so many questions? Oh, oh, because. Because the kind of the buck stops here. It's, it's and true. You, as you they're said, looking, they're you looking the, to you. you and you the set tone. the tone as a number one. And if you walk in smiling and saying good morning, that, that sets the tone for the work day. But that said, when you get home at night, you want nothing more than to make it seem to your family that there's such a thing as a normal life. Yeah. So I always said being... Uh, um, an actress slash uh, mother or wife is like a crucifixion. You're just endlessly torn in two directions. I think one has to make peace with that, with you're never going to get, you're never going to go, okay, now I've got it perfectly balanced. You have to know the onus is on this one at this moment, and I'm exactly. going to do my best with the other two. And when I'm not working, the other two are my absolute focus, and work is going to have to take a back seat. That's right. Um, but uh, it's been, it's been, it's been eye-opening. Hugely challenging. Yeah. And what's your longest work day, would you say? I've done as many as 16 hours. And uh, I remember Juliana Margulies on, on Good Wife saying, I'm, I can go to 14 after that, you know. Particularly, you can imagine in the courtroom on the days oh when God. we do courtroom scenes and you have to keep uh, legal dialogue in your head. And it's all those different setups, of course, because it's the judge Single and yep. the prosecution. Yep. And, defense table and sometimes you have the jury and you just do the scene over and over and over and over or um, block and shoot which is the cameras all on one side and then you do a whole and then bunch it's yeah. just completely on the other side but it's how you negotiate energy and I think only other actors understand the ch real challenge of trying to start a day <clears throat> 4 30 in the morning you know taking a shower at 4 15 in the morning and getting to work and the, your big, if you have a big scene at 6 p.m. that day, and it's maybe three you're into pages your of time, you're into your, yeah. and you, where you don't know where the energy is going to come from, or to 
to be funny or to be emotional, to, to run that gamut. It's true. Uh, Staying fresh is, is a huge, huge challenge. Well, so how do you do it? Well, we do it, though, don't we? And well, I, I don't always... think I do it very well. I oh, think I, I think did a do terrible job this last season. I have no... <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know which way was up, and I'm, I'm, I'm glad that it was good, because I, I, I couldn't... I didn't know sometimes, because I was so tired, I couldn't tell. But how, have, how do you navigate being... Don't you find sleep is just... Sleep is crucial. If yeah. I don't get enough sleep... Yeah. Um, that that makes a huge difference in your life it's as an actor. It's hurry up and go to bed. I mean, I go to bed with my son often. Right. I like to my boyfriend. I'm like, pick a pick a day of the week that we're going to stay up and have grown up dinner. That's right. I also often, when I have a really demanding day as an actor in in any medium, stage, film, I, I just am an actor who will just have to create a bubble around yeah. me and just stay very quiet. And there yeah. might be a lot of you know, rock and roll going on and hair and makeup and talking and people schmoozing. I'm not an energy. actor. I don't know if you are, but I'm not an actor who can like, ha, 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 you know, making jokes and then action and do the performance. Yeah. I, I just go here and just stay in characters, particularly if I'm holding a lot of dialogue in my head. Yeah. And then I feel yeah. that when action is called, my responsibility is to give the best performance I can. And knowing that, you know, we'll have to do it repeatedly, but... Um, Can I ask you yeah. about um, working with young people, with children? Uh, I work with an 18-year-old, an mm -hmm. um, a 16-year-old, and a 14-year-old, and they're all playing slightly younger than they are. But they're... I feel, I feel a sense of responsibility as well that of their development as human beings. They're in this totally adult environment. Yes. And sometimes I can't bear it because they're hearing a ton of swearing and inappropriate conversations about things. And I, I worry about that. I worry about, you know, and I'm playing a mother. There's this very meta aspect of, I feel very Absolutely. responsible for yeah. them. And I, it's interesting. I'm, I'm glad it's a comedy and not a drama because to foist huge amounts of emotion on them would scare me even more than... I know, I hate to say it, but I would never, never put my... I mean, I didn't. I have two grown daughters, but I would never... Ever in a million years. ...be a mother who would put her child in, uh, in show business. It's just too demanding. I mean, you really have to show up, and you have to deliver it, and you may have to deliver it 15 times. Yeah. Do you... Let me ask. I mean, do you do a lot of takes... You come, are you best in the first two takes? Because you don't have an audience, right? We don't, don't have an audience. Right. So here's, it's really, it's really interesting um, to me. You, depending on how a scene goes and how, if I have a huge amount of dialogue, depending on how in my bones it is, like on a Monday, that's fine because I've had the weekend to work but come Friday and there's a big scene that I know I haven't spent as much time on as everything else because now it's Friday and now I'm and white you're knuckling it through kind of a lot of this. I'll often say to one of the other actors, can you go, could you go first and please forgive my yes. finding my way through this? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I think it's, it's sort of scene, scene to scene. And I'm, this is the, if we're lucky, if we get a second season, which I really hope we will, figuring out that aspect of energy management. And I think, as you said, I think I like to chat far too much. Diane, you happy here? What, at your firm? Yeah. Yes. Why? Oh, huh. you wanted to retire. <laughs> yes. Well, life has a way of reminding you of who you are. What has been a super challenging moment for you in well, your it, career? It, a super challenging moment was more than just a moment, but I was, it was the single hardest thing I've ever done as an actress. I was um, offered the role of Mame at the Kennedy Center, which is a huge musical comedy role. It's right up there with Gypsy. If you're not on stage, 
coming down a staircase being fabulous, then you're off stage throwing off your clothes and putting on yet another fabulous outfit, and then they push you back on stage and you're fabulous again. And uh, I knew I was going to do MAME, and so I said, I'm going to, you know, singing lessons and dancing lessons, and I was taking ballet first oh, thing yeah. in the morning and then going cross town to take a uh, jazz class. And, uh, you know, as I said, when you, it, it, you, you train like an athlete yeah. to give a musical performance. As you know, you're, you're a musician and a singer. Um, well, <clears throat> early on, I was, uh, had just finished a ballet class and was on my way to the jazz class across town in New York when inexplicably, because I was wearing flat shoes on dry pavement, I <gasps> skidded and landed right on my, I smashed my kneecap. But I mean, I got up and my leg was dangling like that. And three people helped me into oh, a cab. my God. Not going to go on about it. But that was February. And I was supposed to go into rehearsal for MAME in April. Oh, my gosh. And uh, they reconstructed my kneecap and I was in a brace for six weeks and all the while I was in the brace I was moving as much of my body as I could imagining that I would still play this role and I did I, I oh it was we my called it gosh. maimed or lame <laughs> <laughs> and I <laughs> they gave me the tallest oh damn staircase it was like the size of a Tyrannosaurus Rex. It's, guys, I broke my leg. Do you know how hard it is to walk down a staircase when you... Oh so gosh. it was the most challenging thing wow. I've ever done because it was physically, I had to do physical therapy so aggressively, plus learn choreography, and, and I did it. And on my day off, I was... I, out. I, I could not move on my day off. What yeah. about you? I, honestly, it is the same physical... When you are physically hurt and you still have to put in the hours and on top of putting in work hours, put in the performance and you are in grave physical pain, there is, that is the most challenging aspect of, of my working life. And in, in the three instances that that's happened while I've been working, there has never been anything harder than that. There's nothing emotional, there's no scene, there's no love scene, there's no whatever. That, when you are in physical pain and you have to find a way to move through it, to triumph over it, um, that's it the reminds hard, that's you, the, uh, you know, I think of a Navy SEAL or, or someone who's in it just, or pe people in the military, they have to go into another mode where they're, they're simply in the moment and they're coping and you just let everything else, in a way it's just, kind of thrilling because your level of concentration just has to increase to a point where all you're doing is going from one moment to the next to the next and you get through it and you're yeah it's you know, it's i felt like i reached real mastery over my endocrine system of being able to just turn <laughs> just i need a tad more adrenaline to I, it's really it's interesting there is something deeply athletic about it i think that it is yep. the same there is a massive athleticism that is wildly undervalued in actors, both on stage and in film and television, that you have, that it requires. It, and yet right. there, is not, there is no time to train. There's a man outside and he's not breathing. You've got to come and do CPR. Oh no, I, I can't, I haven't taken the class yet. But you promised you would, and now a man has died. Oh, the horror. You sure there's not a more dramatic way to ask if he got CPR certified? I am being ridiculous with a purpose. It is my brand. So, Minnie, what is the favorite role you've ever played? Or do you have one? Because you've played so many great ones. Aww. Can you narrow it down? Well, I, my favorite film that I was in was Gross Point Blank. That was, that was largely improvised and brilliant and wonderfully constructed and different. But in terms of characters, I think the character I played on a show I did for FX called The Riches was pretty much my favorite character. I'm, I'm very interested in identity and I'm very interested in, in the subterfuge of women because we, right. we consciously do it, we have to do it a lot of the time. And then here is a character, she was a, a drug addict gypsy who takes over the life of a, um, a white middle-class American mother. And it was really interesting 
and different and great and challenging, and I loved it. Oh, wonderful. How long did you do that? We did two seasons. We got, we got absolutely nailed by the writer's strike. And when we came oh, back, there was all kinds of oh. debts to be paid and people who were being, and it was, I, I ran into the, the, the head of FX the other day and he said, I really feel like if the show was on the air now, it would, it would be like a 10 year show. But these, I have that feeling about certain projects I've done, like they happened like they a little too soon. Just as slightly ahead of their time. And but you know, you had two years and maybe the quintessence of it. Somebody it was asked me about Sybil, like a sitcom that I did, and that was my first television, uh, you know, television show that I did that I, I got some attention. And people think it ran longer than it did. It was only three and a half years. Which is crazy because I feel like it ran a lot longer and was very present in the sort of consciousness. I guess, so. and it was a wonderful role, but in many ways I have no regrets that it was only three and a half because it, the danger is you start repeating yourself, of course, which is true in a long right. run of, of, uh, of a that's theater scary. experience, is that, and, and that's a real danger for you know, start, starting to develop a, a crust or get too facile with a performance. Yeah. So, yeah. What's your favorite character I, that you've played? You know, my most magical experience as a performer, I still to this day, was Midsummer Night's Dream in Central Park when I played you, Helena. Oh, you played Helena? Yeah, because I love language and mm. I was trained at Juilliard and she has wonderful language and I was falling in love with my, my husband, uh, my late husband, um, Matthew, and it, it was just a culmination of just feeling so alive, so alive on the stage. Mm. The performance really belonged to me. I felt that I had fought to give that particular performance, and the director gave me one piece of direction that really uh, unlocked the character for me, but I just remember that summer of performing it being enchanted, oh, you know, just I enchanted. And I've you. played wonderful roles, but when people ask me that, I always come back to that's so Good old wonderful. Shakespeare, you know.